Yeah, uh, can you just kind of what was the timeline on you being you know on the interim deal and just kind of what what you feel about it? And had, have you done this before as an interim <laughs> type thing? Yeah, well, you know, coach uh, had the surgery this morning, and um, and he shared that with me uh, last night, a uh, day before yesterday. Um, that he was going to finally go get his surgery. We had talked about it for a while uh, as far as him getting his surgery, but he shared that with me uh, that I was going to uh, coach a team while he was away um, and looking for his speedy recovery to get back uh, with his basketball team. And yes, I've, you know, I've been able to do this uh, several times during my coaching career. Um, and so going through it is not the first time in this environment uh, mm-hmm. like this. Uh, when I was coaching at Golden State, um, I coached 17 games with Coach Nelson there. So um, so, you know, this is not a new thing. Plus, I've been around Coach Musk for so long and have a good understanding of how he will, uh, how his approach was to being here and watching him work every day. And so as I share with the team that, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to stay close to the vest, how we've been doing things. Um, but I got a coach in my style and my personality. Um, and, and I talked with Coach about that. And uh, he said, hey, just do what you need to do. Uh, keep preparing these te- this team to get ready to play a game. Since that lineup was so successful last night, I mean, do you feel like you go, take that again to Baton Rouge, go with the same plan to start with? Yeah, that's that's the plan. The plan is to uh, move forward with that. Uh, watch how they play together, how they communicate with each other. You know how they communicate defensively, but uh, I thought more than anything, and we all thought that the way they they came out into the game and approached it, um, you know, it, it set the tone very very early. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hutch. Yeah, coach, we know you've coached at the, the professional level quite quite a long time. And, and I'm curious how your your time in college has gone so far. And do you feel like since you've got so many games on your belt as an assistant that that may have better prepared you for this opportunity as an interim coach? I think that the thing coming in from, uh, you know, from the NBA coaching uh, and then being here in college, you know, basketball is, is all the same, relatively the same. You're going to coach the game. You're going to look at different ideals and, and thoughts on offense and defense that part is going to be the same. You know, uh, the biggest thing that I had to adjust to and learn more than anything was uh, the recruiting aspect of everything, along with your daily uh, day-to-day uh, business that you have to do as far as preparing for a basketball team, preparing young men to go out and play, you know, all those things there. So uh, that was one of the big things that, um, you know, that I had to adjust to and learn as I got into it. And I came in here with no ego, just to focus on growing and learning as a, as a college coach. Scotty. Mm-hmm. Hey, coach, I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on Jalen Williams. He's been rebounding the ball really well the last three games. Got a couple of double doubles in a row. What have you thought of his efforts on the glass and kind of how he's led you guys in, in that area and league play so far? Yeah, I think, uh, Scotty, well, I think what he's done so far is uh, he's gotten in, in better, better conditioning. Um, he's put the time in. I think he's now he's healthy. You've seen the bounce in how he's playing now. So I think that's that's going to be a big plus for him moving forward. He has all the abilities to be one of the uh, uh, one of the top rebounds in the league. Um, and as he continue to grow, he can be one of the top rebounds in um, you know in the country that that coach thinks uh, of how he can play and how he can do things. Uh, but he's showing what he's capable of doing. And I think for for him to just be in better conditioning and he's gotten there, and as well as um, um, you know his approach to the game. That's the biggest key for him and what he's, he's done uh, thus far. And I think health-wise, that's always a big plus. That was a quick turnaround from last night, but with you saying that you guys want, kind of want to move forward with that same lineup from last night, would you consider, I guess, Kamani like day-to-day might yeah. be a game-time decision or kind of what What do you know yeah. about that right yeah, now? Kamani, he, he's still being evaluated, and uh, we'll know as we move forward. You know, obviously you got to travel and um, you got to see how he responds to traveling, you know, with, uh, his ankle and things like that. So, because, you know, you get a little compression there from traveling. But, uh, but our, our staff, the training staff is doing an incredible job uh, to get him uh, up. And hopefully we have a chance for him to play in this game. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Curtis. Coach, I, I imagine you probably got a couple practices to go before this game, but. What have you thought about the response of the guys so far since hearing the news and just how confident are you they can carry over the momentum from last night into the weekend? Well, you know, I think the one benefit that uh, myself, Gus, and Clay and all the other coaches here must give us a lot of freedom on the floor. We have stations all throughout. I'm sure you guys have been to some few practices, but we have stations during the course of practice. And each coach get a chance to coach these young men uh, throughout the day. And so I think... Uh, we continue to do the same thing that we always have done. 
you know, uh, without any big changes other than obviously I'm coaching and Coach Moss is not here. But overall, everything kind of stays the same. We coach these young men. We uh, uh, you know, make sure they're doing things the right way on the floor and off the floor. Um, and now it's just a matter of the game. And, and yes, momentum is, is key in, in any game, you know, and this is no different. Uh, you know, they feel it very confident in what they have done and what they had to do last night. But I think more importantly, they felt good about sharing the game with each other. And they really felt good about it. You saw at the end of the game with our young bench coming in and some of those guys making some plays and how the crowd responded. But, but if you look closely, you look at how the players responded to those guys when they made plays. And obviously it's a, a pretty good LSU team that you're playing this weekend. What stands out to you about them, maybe particularly what they do on the defensive end? That's the one thing. What they do on the defensive end because of their length and, uh, and, the, and their athleticism that they have. They cover a lot of ground and they do a great job of switching and trying to flatten you out to make you have to play from out on the perimeter. And uh, we have to be smart with the basketball. Uh, things that we've been trying to do is we take care of the turnovers. You're going to have those in the game because you're playing an imperfect game but what you don't want to do is move over uh, a bigger number that you can't recover from you know if you have a turnover that you're close around the basket uh, that kind of helps you a little bit because you can get back a little bit defensively but if you have a turnover up around the uh, foul line or three-point line then you very seldom do you recover and especially against this team because their ability to uh, attack the rim uh, you don't recover from those Bob Ethan, I know you're from Baton Rouge. Your, your Wikipedia says you were Paige says you were born there, so I assume that's right. Um, yeah, this would be a big deal, no matter who you guys were playing. But what's it mean to you to go back to your hometown as the interim coach of the Razorbacks? Well, it's not, it, it wasn't even just going back as an interim coach. It was the fact that uh, even just being here as an assistant and going back uh, as an assistant coach to be there. You know, because you do COVID and everything, it was a hard time. I hadn't seen my parents, my, my mom in a long time because of COVID. Then, of course, my schedule got pretty busy, you know. So that was already going to be a, a big moment, you know, with relatives wanting to come to that game. You know, we already had that conversation with a great deal of, of our of my family members, you know, now to go back and coach. One thing about it, my family has been around me, obviously, for a long period of time and have watched me coach when we played the Pelicans. You know, they always would take that trip up to New Orleans and come watch a game uh, every time we played there. So now it is right there in the in in, um, in Baton Rouge uh, at LSU, um, you know, just makes it a bit more sweeter. But I think more than anything, uh, just going down, they, they know, have known me as a coach. Um, and, and now there's no, no different going into this environment. How many family are, do you anticipate having there? Well, I won't say it out loud because one of them, a couple of them may be watching. So I'll just say I'll make a decision game time. But you're, you're going to have a good crew? Yeah, we should have a good crew, yeah. Yeah, we should have a good crew that come out. You know, obviously, I, I, two people that I got to take care of all the time, but my wife won't be there. But I make sure my mom and my wife are always taken care of. And after that, I'll just have other people mad at me. Did, did LSU recruit you as a player? Well, there's a whole nother story to that one as well with uh, LSU. Um, they re recruited me very small, um, but at that time I was not uh, a, a, a re top recruited kid out of McKinley High School. And I probably would not have gone to school at home. Um, but the only time that I got a chance to go into at that time, what it was called the Assembly Hall, uh, Assembly Center, one of the two, uh, was when the Washington Bullets at that time with their name and the Atlanta Hawks played there. And myself and three other friends had a chance to get into that building and watch that game. And so going back into that environment again, uh, from being a little kid, probably around, I think I was probably around 11, 12, somewhere in that area uh, to go back there. So it'd be a, a special place. You know, obviously we, you know, we just walk around that campus and see Mike the Tiger and all those good things. So. And I know you beat him in 87 on, on your way to the national title. How, how, how sweet was that? And did they recruit you out of JUCO? Cause obviously you were heavily recruited out of junior college. Well, I didn't get recruited by them out, out of JC uh, because uh, I had already pretty much determined what schools I was going to go to. And, um, and LSU was not one of them. But I knew a lot of the players because they played with those guys in the summertime. And then uh, one of the players on the team, his dad coached at my high school, uh, got Teddy Brown. Okay. I got a couple more. If, if Turn back over to Mike or if you want me to finish. Uh, I don't know what's uh, – oh, oh, Christina, you still have a question? Yeah, I was just kind of wondering how involved – you touched on this a little bit, but how involved Eric will be over these next few days and these next couple of games and how much of it has been him kind of saying, hey, you can kind of do your own thing. 
Well, I, I, I talked with Coach uh, last night, obviously, uh, and then talked with him uh, briefly before, and we text back and forth. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to share everything that I do. I'm sharing it with him. Um, you know, he told me just go out and coach the game. Um, you know, just do what you need to do. And, um, and so that's, that's the approach that I'm taking. Um, so, but I'll communicate with him on everything that I'm doing. Uh, every thought idea that I might have, uh, I'll run that by him. So it, there, there are no surprises if he sees something on television or at a practice um, that he can comment on. And, but I always have reasons uh, as to why I'm doing certain things. But again, he and I have such a great relationship for so long um, that he trusts what I'm doing. Um, he know the, the, the background benefit of that is that we, we, I'm trying to help him win games and he's trying to help me grow as a coach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bob, finish this out. Okay. Um, you know, you know, Eric has to be an excruciating pain to, <laughs> to have had the surgery during the season. What were you, you know, he told us the other day it was getting worse, not, not better. So it's maybe it's not a surprise he decided to get the surgery now, but just what had you seen from him? And when he told you, you say he told you that on Tuesday that he was going to get the surgery. I mean, did you think, yeah, you need to get the surgery or you were surprised or kind of what was your reaction to that? Well, as he uh, obviously went through it and started going through a day to day and practicing and trying to get through and push himself through the practices and everything. Uh, but obviously I knew, knew, you know, what he would face, just like everyone on the staff knew what was taking place. Uh, but my son, one of my sons had the same surgery. So I knew that he played football through it and he tried to keep pushing through it to a point where it just couldn't go any farther. And he eventually had it and he bounced back uh, greatly, you know, from that surgery. So uh, we wish the, the, the speedy recovery for coach to get back uh, around the team, around his team, around us. Um, so, but we, but you knew he, it, it was, it was wearing on because when you can't really sleep a little bit, that, that becomes a problem. And I think coach was fighting through it as much as he can. You know, he's, as you know, he, he competes at everything. You know, but this is just one uh, competition that he just couldn't win, and he made the decision, and so to get him back on the road to speedy recovery. And then the lineup last night, um, I guess I, I didn't know. Some people smarter than me told me that that lineup had never played together mm -hmm. those five on the floor all season. Mm -hmm. So when Eric says, "Okay, this is who we're going to start," basically JD and four, you know, mm -hmm. forwards. And I added up, I think going in those guys that averaged 47, five, and obviously JD, the most, most of that, mm -hmm. um, what, what was your reaction when Eric said, okay, this is who we're going to start. I mean, and well, what do you think, you know, well, see, I think putting it on the floor to, to play it and go out and as coach put it on the floor, but you know, there were times in practice where certain groups of combinations were on the floor as well. You know, they just hadn't played on the floor in a real game, you know, but those guys are comfortable with each other. I mean, they, we've been working with each other for so long and, um, you know, each guy has had an opportunity to be on that floor and that group came together and, you know, coach thought that would, would work because what you needed in that game last night was physicality. And those guys brought that to that table. And I think that's why we took control of the game very early. Yeah, and I know LSU, they, I mean, they think they started seven foot, six, eight, six, seven. They're, they're pretty physical. I mean, do you feel like this could be a good combo for, for a team like LSU too? Well, I think you got to be smart. You know, you got to be physical, but yet you got to be smart. Um, you have to take care of the basketball. You have to take good shots. You have to uh, have timely re offensive rebounding opportunities. So you can't get beyond yourself. You know, we have to just focus on what we did last night, clean up some things uh, today as we did, uh, jump into a little brief moment of, of prep for uh, uh, LSU, and then uh, we'll get into more of it on tomorrow. And um, But I think overall, the focus on this team here is – Enjoy what you did last night, how you did it last night, and how you prepared for it several days prior to that. And we'll do the same thing approaching the LSU. I know it was a long time ago. Yeah, everybody remembers you for the shot against Syracuse, but I'm sure beating LSU was a pretty big moment for you. I think that might have been the Bobby Knight phone game. I think maybe I'm wrong. Well, maybe I'm mixed up. But what do you remember about that game? I think you guys had a big comeback. I was reading up on it a little bit. I think he was ordering a pizza and they put the wrong ingredients on it. And uh, I think that's why he did that. But, uh, but I enjoyed, you know, it was good because I played against so many of those guys and plus um, being able to go to the final four. You know, I think when we moved through that team, it was an opportunity for us to have a chance to go to the final four. LSU was a team that we had to beat to get that opportunity. And that's what happened. Um, and, you know, as we played that game, won that game, moved to the next round, uh, and coming home in the summertime, 
you know, you didn't get a chance to see some of those guys because you played before in the summertime with them, but everyone was so busy with everything going on. I went straight from there to the Pan American game, so I didn't get a chance to uh, go home for a long period of time. But you had the bragging rights for that period of time. Okay, well, th thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time.